Hello, my name is Monica Valkavi, and I will be presenting an evaluation of secret sharing algorithms. I will specifically be reviewing Shamir's and Blakely's schemes. Within this presentation, we will be discussing what is secret sharing, what is the importance of secret sharing, the creation and seminal schemes of secret sharing, and then we will be having an overview of Shamir's scheme and Blackley's scheme. We will begin with an overview of secret sharing. Secret sharing is characterized as the methods by which a secret can be shared among participants where each receives a share of the secret. Secret sharing often consists of a dealer and a certain number of players, often denoted as N. A certain number of participants is required in order to reconstruct the secret. Some uses for secret sharing are when sensitive information, such as encryption keys or passcodes, need to be shared with different individuals. It is also often used within cloud environments. Secret sharing allows for someone who has less than the required number of shares to possess as much knowledge as someone who has no shares. Secret sharing is considered to be created independently by both Shamir and Blackley in 1979. They are both credited with the invention of secret sharing. Secret sharing is also able to increase the redundancy of keys. If a key is lost, secret sharing allows for all participants of a party to come together to reconstruct the secret, or in this case, the key. Secret sharing is considered to be information theoretically secure. This means that it is as secure as the information. This has been proven. Secret sharing also possesses limitations. The share must be equal to the size of the secret. This is due to the threshold. As there are T minus one shares, no information can be determined about the secret. The share must include as much information as the secret possesses. Secret sharing also utilizes random bits. If a secret is one bit, and needs to be shared with a T number of people, then T minus one random bits are necessary to do so. This scheme is also not always secure. This is seen as black in Blackley's scheme. We will begin with an overview of Shamir's scheme. It was invented by Adi Shamir in 1979. This scheme is a form of distributed secret sharing. The scheme requires a certain number of shares and is considered to be a T of N scheme. We will begin with a brief overview of Shamir's scheme. In this scheme, secrets are split into shares. A given number of shares are required in order to retrieve the secret. This is called the threshold. It is considered to be the minimum number of shares required to obtain and reconstruct the secret. The goal of Shamir's scheme can be defined mathematically. The secret must be divided into n shares of data, s sub 1 to s sub n, to allow for the following. The knowledge of any t or more shares of s sub i allows for s to be computed easily. The secret s can be obtained through the combination of any t shares. The knowledge of t minus 1 shares causes the secret s to remain undetermined. t is the threshold required to determine the secret s. This makes the scheme a T of N scheme. If T is equal to N, then all shares are needed in order to reconstruct the secret. Shamir's scheme is based on the concept that T points are needed in order to define a polynomial where the degree of the polynomial is equal to T minus 1. The scheme utilizes polynomials over a finite field. In order to implement this scheme, we must assume that f is a finite field with a size p. In this finite field, 0 is less than t, which is less than or equal to n, which is less than p. s is also less than p, where p is a prime number. In order to implement Shamir's scheme, we must select t minus 1 integers from a sub 1 up until a sub t minus 1, where a sub i is less than p. A sub 0 is considered to be the secret. A polynomial is then constructed that possesses a degree of t minus 1. n points are then constructed and distributed to each participant with p. 
Using Lagrange interpolation, the coefficients of the polynomial are then determined. As Shamir's scheme is more commonly used in practice, there are many use cases for this scheme. It can be used in the following cases. When encryption keys need to be secured or for passcodes within companies, in this case, multiple parties would need to come together in order to determine the code. With this scheme, parties must always be authorized in order to hold shares of the secret. This diagram provides an overview of Shamir's scheme. The secret S is divided into shares and then divided among participants. A given number of participants must come back together with their shares in order to reconstruct and obtain the secret S. We will begin by reviewing an existing example of Shamir's scheme. We will choose our message to be equal to secret. We will then convert the text into hexadecimal and from hexadecimal into decimal. Our secret is now a number. We will let the number of shares be equal to five and our threshold equal to three. We will then choose a P value based on the finite field. From here, random A and B values are chosen. We then create a polynomial where f of x is equal to the secret plus the value of A times x plus the value of B times x squared. We will then create five shares using the created polynomial. The shares are denoted as d sub 0, d sub 1, d sub 2, d sub 3, and d sub 4. They are created through the point x, f of x, modulo p. As we set our threshold equal to 3, we will now select 3 shares. With these 3 shares, we will perform Lagrange interpolation. In this example, we are using the shares created in d sub 0, d sub 1, and d sub 3. After performing Lagrange interpolation, we are left with two coefficients and the secret. In this case, the secret turns out to be negative. Using modulo division, we are able to recover the secret. If we convert the final term in the polynomial back to text, we will find that it is equal to our secret, in this case, secret. We will now begin with Blackley's scheme. Blackley's scheme was invented by George Blackley in 1979. This scheme utilizes principles of geometry in order to share secrets. Like Shamir's scheme, it requires a certain number of shares. It is also considered to be a T of N scheme. We will begin reviewing Blackley's scheme as an overview. Secrets are split into shares. A given number of shares are then required in order to retrieve the secret. This is the threshold. It is considered to be the minimum number of shares required to obtain the secret. This scheme employs a geometric approach. Blackley's scheme is defined by the following. In Blackley's scheme, a secret is considered to be a point in t-dimensional space. The intersection of hyperplanes allows for the reconstruction of the secret. Both the secret and the shares are defined by the equation system c times x equals y, where c is the matrix and y is the vector within the equations for the hyperplanes. Blackley's scheme is represented by the following equation, c times x modulo p equals y. Within this scheme, the point of intersection of all hyperplanes is the secret. It is reliant on the concept that any t non-parallel t minus 1 dimensional hyperplanes intersect at a specific point. This secret can be any coordinate of the intersection. The key is not able to be encoded using all of the coordinates. This will lead to too much information being shared, thus rendering the scheme unsecure. The process of implementing Blackley's scheme is characterized by the following steps. We must first begin by choosing a prime number, p. We then must use the secret x sub 0 to create a point. We then choose random y sub 0 and z sub 0 axis values in modulo p. 
Using these values, we are able to create a point of intersection. This point of intersection is Q, X sub 0, Y sub 0, Z sub 0. We then choose values A and B in modulo P in order to generate values for C in the hyperplane. This generates the equation C is equivalent to Z sub 0 minus A times X sub 0 minus B times Y sub 0 modulo P. Using the equation C is equivalent to Z sub 0 minus A times X sub 0 minus B times Y sub 0 modulo P, the hyperplane can be defined by the following. Z is equivalent to A times X plus B times Y plus C modulo P, where each participant, denoted by I, has a specific hyperplane. This equation is A sub I times X plus B sub I times Y minus Z is equivalent to negative C sub I modulo P. A matrix is then constructed using these values. If the determinant of the matrix is a non-zero value within modulo P, then the matrix can be inverted and the secret can be found and reconstructed. The following image represents Blackley's scheme. The point S represents the secret. Each of the lines represents a hyperplane. At their point of intersection is where the secret is. We will now review an existing example of Blackley's scheme. In this example, we let P equals to 73. We will then divide into five shares. We have share A, where Z is equal to 4 times X plus 19 times Y plus 68. Share B, where Z is equal to 52 times X plus 27 times Y plus 10. We have share C, where Z is equal to 36 times X plus 65 times Y plus 18. In share D, we have Z equal to 57 times X plus 12 times Y plus 16. And in share E, we have Z is equal to 34 times X plus 19 times Y plus 49. In the following slide, we will see that these shares are then used to create a matrix. We then use three shares in order to create the matrix to determine the secret. In this example, we are using shares A, B, and C. The first line of the matrix shows the values for A and B within share 1. The second line of the matrix shows the value for A and B in share B. And the third line in the matrix shows the values of A and B for the matrix C. We then use these values and find that our point is equal to 42, 29, 57. We must remember that the point is in the style of x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0. Remembering that x sub 0 is equal to the secret, we find that our secret in this case is equal to be 42. We will now review a brief comparison of these schemes. Shamir's scheme can rep be represented as points on a single line. Blackley's scheme can be represented as lines intersecting at a single point. Shamir's scheme is based on the idea that two points are needed for, to create a line, three points for a parabola, and four for a cubic curve. Blackley's scheme uses the idea that two non-parallel lines intersect at one point and three non-parallel lines intersect at a specific point. Shamir's scheme can be used in practice and is most commonly used in practice. Blackley's scheme lacks real-world applications. In the original presentation, only a guideline was presented for matrices, but no matrix was given. It is found that Blackley's scheme is not space efficient. It also lacks security as each participant knows that the point, the secret, is within their hyperplane. To review, both Blackley and Shamir's schemes are said to have been created as a response to secret sharing in 1979. Both are considered to be T of N threshold schemes, thus requiring a minimum number of shares in order to reconstruct the secret. Shamir's scheme is most commonly used in practice and is both efficient and secure. Blackley's scheme possesses security flaws and incomplete documentation, rendering it difficult to use in practice. The following are my references used for this presentation. 
Thank you.